it's a, a, a big fight, a huge fight, a fight that shows the people that are watching that I've still got it. And uh, it's never really left, if I'm being honest. I know that, I just want to show everyone else. There's still a respect there, obviously, between me and Josh, but there's just been a few things that have been said, I, I think, from him and his team that were unnecessary, and, and that's it. No big deal. Looking sharp there, big lad. <laughs> Looking sharp. <laughs> myself here. In particular, he done a little video at the public workout in Hutton's gym, um, where I'd just finished training, and... I thought he was taking a photograph, doing a selfie, so I kind of stood with my hand up and he done, he said, oh, I'm myself, Carl, and he just was a wee bit disrespectful. I remember getting out of the ring, thinking, who do you think he is? I wish I'd have hit him a slap, but um, soon, you know, an hour later, I'd forgotten about it. Yeah, that's, just, that's it, really, that's it. Well, there's a few other things, but I'll keep them to myself. He's thinking, I'm on the slide, and they keep talking about timing. You know, they got Lee Selby, and they'll openly say it, I got Lee Selby at the right time. So what is he saying? He wouldn't have fought him a year and a half ago when the fight was being talked about. So he got him when he was completely weight drained rather than the shape he was in a year and a half ago. And they're saying that about me now. It's about timing, so they think I'm over the hill. So he's starting to realise that I think as the fight gets a bit closer that I'm not. And he'd certainly know all about it on the night. In the first round, he, he'd realise I'm not over the hill. They're saying these things to themselves because they want to believe it. I don't know if they actually believe it, though. And I'm going to introduce him to world-class boxing. I'm going to introduce him. He's never seen it before. Carl's flying. I mean, he's been, he's been at the gym 16 months now and by far the best I've seen him. By far. He's really got the bit between his teeth. Um, he feels like he's got something to prove to people. His opportunity to win a world title back again. I've got a special fight in Carl Frampton. I think Josh Warrington is a very good fighter, and by no stretch of the imagination are we overlooking him. Um, far from it. We, we we understand it's going to be a, a, a difficult fight, but for it, as far as he says he's living off past glories, you know that's. I I believe that's him trying to gain confidence in, in it from himself. Uh, he, he knows we've not, we're not overlooking him. He knows how serious we're taking it. Um, I think he's hoping that Carl's not as good as he was, but that's far from the truth. The way he's been sparring, the way he's been gone, gone through his work. The main thing for me for this fight was Carl's got to be Carl, but he's got to be able to do it at a gear higher than he usually does because of, of Josh's work rate. And, and he's done that and more. So the, the vision I had in my head at the start of camp of where I wanted him to be, he's, he's surpassed that expectation. Carl Frampton, in the form that he's in at the minute, he's capable of getting any featherweight in the world out of there, including Josh. We'll just be a flag of black cab outside here, do you think? Bit of, bit of an open workout, get the fans sort of coming around, get a few pictures and stuff. Well, obviously we've got Martin, Martin Murray's on the bill. Um, I'm looking forward to Efren, the Efren fight. Uh, that's going to be a good scrap. But this, uh, the, the bill's stacked with, with good, entertaining fights. It's actually better and not as stressful fight week when it's not in Belfast. Yeah. But more re laid back, relaxed, chilled out. I'm starting to know where I'm going now. Like, I walk around the city centre and stuff and... Started I'm, saying sound, mate, and all that, didn't you? Sound? Sound? I always said sound. That wasn't a mag thing. I was cool, always man. sound. We've had some great sparring. One, one kid in particular who's, who's on GB, big, strong, lightweight as well, so he's, he's been physically tough for Carl. But by the time the sparring was finished, he was absolutely on fire. Been by far the best camp he's had, and uh, the form he's in matches the occasion yeah. to, uh, to put in the performance I believe he can do. So that's real fun. Isn't it? Real fun. I was just about to say, Ed, what's it like in there for Grub for out of the way? Yeah? I've never been there, mate. I was in it with Freddie Flintoff when he had that, that fight. Fight, was it? I, I remember he's not. Shall I give Rio a ring now and see if he's come for slot? I'll send him a message on Twitter. <laughs> Doesn't follow me, but. <laughs> oh, Big Freddy followed me the other day, actually. On Twitter? Yeah. He still oh. hasn't followed me. He used to train with us at Oliver's, and um, I didn't even know he was a cricketer. Sorry, I knew he was a cricketer, but I didn't realise how sort of big a name is because I don't watch cricket. And um, and I'm like giving him loads, like, go on, you big daft. Jump over the bar and all that, and then, uh, <laughs> and then one Sunday morning, he opened the paper and he was he was on the front of the front page of the News of the World, and I was like, that's that guy who comes to the gym. <laughs>
who's your biggest follower? Frank Rooney and uh, Donald Trump as well. Donald Trump follower? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Barack Obama follower. Barack Obama follower. That's good to say. <laughs> Donald Trump follower. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah, come on. We'll have to do it afterwards. It's a great show. Look at the great fights we've got in the undercard. I'm in there, got my shirt off. I'm doing some Padraiki Atten. What more can I ask a 19 year old? It's all, it's all come true now. Got good support, really good support. Hopefully, listen, he's got a quarter of the talent of his uh, brother, then we're going to be in for a good ride with him. I'm telling you, this is what every fighter dreams of. I ain't going to let it slip. And we've got Nathan Gorman, who's narrowing with a change of opponent. Literally a big step up, you know, uh, six foot seven and a half. Giant. He's been there with some good opposition, you know, he went the distance with uh, Joseph Parker. But, you know, I'm ready. I've had 12 weeks of preparation for it, so there's no excuses, really. If he stops the guy, that will be a statement. Mark Heffron and Liam Williams. What do you need to say about that one? I mean, that is a quality fight. You know, Mark now is uh, 20 and 0. He's a good puncher. I like him. I think he's an excellent fighter. Against Liam Williams, who had two great battles with Liam Smith. Liam's not, not sort of afraid of stepping up, so he's stepping up. So we got a good fight there. We're both two good fighters. I've, just, I've looked at his trick train, how I always train, I always put 100% in and never cut no corners. Once I beat Liam on the 22nd, yeah, I'm looking to move on to big things, yeah. You've got Martin Murray, who's done extremely well the last year. I want to fight the best. I'm not saying he's the best, but he's a former world champion and he's a dangerous fighter. And a good win on Saturday puts him on the line for a world title shot next year. He's second on the best, the best Martin Murray. And I've got no excuse. He comes Saturday night. The weight's been gone. Sparney's been bang on. Cheney's been bang on. And I'm in fight week feeling like this. So I'm buzzing. I plan on going in there, making a statement and getting the job done, relaxing over Christmas and then get kicking on next year. You know, fighting the former champion, Hassan Nadam. That's a good fight. That's a 50-50 fight. But the winner of that will be number one and become the mandatory. We've got uh, Michael Collins, you know, fighting Cunningham. So that's going to be a decent little scrap as well. Michael's uh, he's had a good career up to as yet, and he's certainly had a good year. So he'll want to finish on a bang as well. Well, let's say how it is. This is a proper fight for the fans. This is a boxing triple A list fight. That's what it is. It's a fight that we're going to savour. But more important again, guys at the top of their game. There has to be a loser. He says, who knows, it may be a draw. And it may be, which I, I really believe is going to be a great fight that deserves an immediate rematch. Who knows? I can't wait for Saturday. Honestly, I can't wait to go, you know. Now it's here. I know I'm fit. I know I'm sharp. I can't wait to just get in there. And, and this is what we live for. When we got into December, knowing that in three weeks I'd be, I'd be stood face to face with Carl, training blows. And uh, I can't wait to go, defend that title, and get fat for Christmas. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed going in the fight week. Probably in the change rooms when I get hyped up when I'm leaving for the venue. But I'm looking forward to a good fight. Just the, just the way things have been going in camp, I feel like I'm going to do a number on this guy. Uh, I feel like I'm going to win convincingly. I'm going to show people that I'm back to my best. Not that I never was, but there's, there's doubters, but I want to show them that I'm going to be a world champion again and I can unify this division as well after. I'm fully confident that I'm going to win this fight. If you've got, say, there's four top guys in the world at their weight, there are two of them, and they're fighting each other. So what we're up against, we're up against Dylan White has already been done, knocked out. And you've got Derek Chisora in eight meaningful fights on his record, has lost seven of them. And the only reason he's in this fight is because of a win over Takam uh, when he was losing that fight and pulled out the lottery punch. That is why that fight's on. And look at the undercard that we got. Quality all around. And what's their undercard? David Price against Tim Little. So. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? The truth of the matter is, for boxing, this is the event that matters. Thank you, 
everybody for being here today uh, for a bill which I've been looking forward to massively. You can't really establish a favourite one way or another, and that for me is the definition of a really top-class boxing show, and I think that is most definitely what we've got here in Manchester this weekend. I'm excited by this opportunity. I'm a fighting man, and we'll see what Michael's got Saturday night. It's a huge show, first pay-per-view show I boxed on, so you know, I, I'm looking forward to a great evening Saturday night. I'm buzzing for Saturday. I plan on winning, winning on style on Saturday. Everybody's saying, you know, about Mark being this tremendous puncher. I don't think he's quite the killer that people are making him out to be. I just 100% I'm going to knock him out on Saturday. You can see fear in your eyes, you're scared. Shut up, you d You're getting battered, man. <laughs> You're getting your head punched in. I'm going to smash that nose all over your face. Yeah, <laughs> boy, mate. It's getting boring. knocked out, boy. Hey. How are you going, Josh? How are we doing? You all right? Okay? Yeah, good. You okay? Trish, perhaps speed, mate. Happy work, man. You're ready to roll? Yeah, whenever you're ready, buddy. Okay. <laughs> you guys okay? Yes, mate. Okay. Uh, Josh, some people are writing you off once again. How does that feel as the champ? Same old, isn't it? I keep hearing it, the underdog and this and other, but if anything it motivates me, I, I, I don't get upset by it. I feel invincible. So, you know, I feel like I'm getting the peak of my career as well. No, it's, it's going to take some specialists to stop me. Who's got most on the line? Is it your career on the line against his title? Yeah, well, it's, it's both, isn't it? Um, obviously, I'm not contemplating retirement. I'm not contemplating getting beat here. I'm fully focused on winning this fight, but yeah, that's, you've said it correctly there. Potentially my career against his belt, um, but I'm fully focused on this fight and I'm fully confident that I'm going to win it. I guess there'll be always those out there who will doubt me. There'll probably be those out there who'll say, oh, you're always saying now that Carl's going to splat my head all over the canvas. They'll, they'll turn around and say, oh, well, Carl finished a few years ago, you know, after, after I've done business on Saturday. But, you know, all I can do is go in there, keep doing what I'm doing, keep winning. And I made my family proud, made my city proud, and uh, made those who support me proud, and that's the main thing. I think there is respect between me and Josh, but it's a fight and uh, I believe this is going to be a tough fight. It will be very hard to want it more than I want this tail right now. The fire is burning ever brightly in me, my stomach. I'm, I'm so hungry and I can't wait to get in there. People said, why didn't you have a steady defence? No, nah, man, I'm not about that. I want to have the big fights. I believe I'm, I'm capable of beating any featherweight and I want to fight the best. I think he'd be confident, but he says he's never been hurt in any fight um, ever in his life. Well, that's got to be down to the opposition he's fighting. Um, I'll openly admit that I've been hurt in fights, but it's about, you know, gritting down the teeth and, and digging in. Um, I know he's lying when he says he hasn't been hurt because he was visibly shaken by Kiko Martinez, so anyone can be hurt in this game. Um, and uh, I think he's made for me. And he's a good fighter, but I think he's made for me and his style will play into my hands. People assume that when you fight Frampton, distance isn't going to be an issue in the sense that you're going to be closing, closing it down all night. Obviously, as a, as a taller fighter, you normally want to keep normally keep the range of the fight and probably say people turn around and say that I'm just a come forward pressure fighter and that's all I've got in my, in my army but obviously there'll be times when I want to dictate the distance and times when I was just burn on his chest but we'll play it on Saturday. Josh has something in him that he won't, he'll want to stay in there to the end and he'll keep going. So it, it does have all the ingredients for a good fight and they think personally that I'm I'm done, or over the hill, or don't have the hunger that, that I once did. And that's where they're making a huge mistake. I don't think you're overhill. I've been preparing for you. Well, I've seen things in the media that kind of suggest that. And when this fight is getting sticky, if it may turn into a dog fight, and that's when they'll see and they'll realise that I'm not over the hill. You know, sticking the fingers up to them and saying there's plenty left to give. When it gets tough in the fight, which it may do, he started to question himself and think, I thought Frampton's meant to be over the hill. I thought Frampton's meant to die after the second half of the fight. And when it's not happening, then we'll see how he reacts. Both fighters want it. You know, with all that's been said with, with Carl and his comments, I'd know that he wants to be back at that level. He ain't going to go over there and just, like, roll over, you know? So he's, he's going to try to give everything for that 12-round for that duration. So, so am I. And uh, that has to equal uh, an exciting fight. Who's going to have the most fans there on the night? 
I think if you're not from Leeds, you're supporting me. And uh, I'm talking about the Manx, I'm talking about the Scousers and people from, from anywhere. Um, and obviously I, I bring a lot of support from Belfast and, and all of Ireland over with me too. So um, we'll see on the night. I think it could be pretty split. I, I know I've done all right with, it, with my, my own personal tickets. And um, those boys always make plenty of noise. That, that, you know, it might be a few thousand, but it feels like even 10,000 now, we're just them alone. And I do believe I, I, I may have won over um, a few neutrals, there might be a few you know, Irish fans who are, who are supporting us as well, so it's going to be going in there just enjoying the old occasion. And uh, I think the more relaxed you are, you know, the, the better for. Don't get me wrong, it's nice to have a bit of, bit of nerves, but yeah, I think confidence is, is, is a, massive, a massive key, and you do get to a stage where you think, I'd beat anybody. I'm going in this fight relaxed, but, but full, of, full of confidence. And a good friend of mine, Liam Baggett from back home, former Crusaders, football player and he says in their dressing room they had a motto on the wall total respect but no fear and that's that's what I'm going to do this fight with. Now Mark Heffron against Liam Williams absolutely has all the makings this one. I know I can win a world title I'm a lot more confident in my ability I know I'm going to win Saturday and it's going to be a good one. I'm the better all-round fighter and um, I just 100% I'm going to knock him out on Saturday. But you ain't gonna mark we'll my words. Saturday. We'll see. Mark my words. I think it got to him. Um, I think it already got to him before the press conference. To be honest, with you. I think he's been a bit rattled. It's all well and good being able to punch, but you need to, you need to have that bit more all round. Liam's a, a very good counter puncher. Um, that's probably his, his, his best aspect. Uh, he's just a, a good counter puncher. Yeah, that's, um, I feel I'm the bigger, stronger fighter. So if he wants to have a fight. I'm the biggest, stronger. He thinks he's invincible, he's going to try and walk through me. And I've obviously got other plans and he's going to have a shock, let me tell you. Everybody sees him as, you know, this killer machine who's unbeaten in 21 fights with, with 17 KOs or whatever. On paper, that looks very impressive, it does. But what good is it building up that kind of record when you're fighting nobody's? If you are a new mark, Commit to the fight like you um, say you are. This is going to be a hell of a fight. How long do you think it's going to go? Four to six. Four if he's six if he's lucky. He's a massive bully and he's getting beat. Mm, you can see fear in him. That's exactly what I'm seeing in Mark. There's no fear whatsoever. He knows me. full well. How can you fear he's me? Getting done. Never, never in a million years. Some people have your fight with Liam pegged to be fight of the year. Um, yeah. Um, well, for as long as, long as it lasts. Um, it's going to be the fight of the year, yeah? My prediction is I'm going to knock him out. I personally think it's going, to, it's going to be a shootout, but I do respect him as a fighter and I respect his power, yeah. I was looking for his box wreck, and um, other than Liam Smith, who's he fought? They're all tomatoes. Everyone that he's boxed are tomatoes. Everyone that he's boxed where he's knocked him out in 3-4, I'll knock him out in a round. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the official weigh-in as we get set for a great night of World Championship Boxing tomorrow night at Manchester Arena. You've got young, young Tommy Fury. He's been sparring with some excellent fighters and more than holding his own. Boxes brilliantly off the back foot. But when you look at the armory, the shoulders and the arms you've got on him, eventually, you know, if I can get him going back like Tyson and moving forward like I used to do, I think we've got a good prospect on our hands. I've had a lot of time to think about my debut. Obviously, it's going to be a packed house, it's going to be a good crowd in there. All I've got to do is keep myself composed on the night. And if I do what I can do in the gym, I'm going all the way. 17 stone, 10 pounds. If I believe where I believe where I think I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to beat the likes of Razvan. Don't get me wrong, he's a dangerous fighter. He's a former world title challenger. He's been in there with some of the best competitors. He's mixed at world level, so it's a good test for me. He's unbelievable. He's a real natural talent. I mean, he only had like 12 fights as an amateur. Real natural ability. I believe I'm the best fighter I've ever been. Older, wiser, more experienced. Train a lot smarter. You know, there was a couple of years ago where it, really fell out of love with boxing. And if I'm honest, I think it kind of showed him the performances. It did, son. Yeah, no, I'm just speaking honestly, Steve, like I always do, and it did. And now I've got the love back for it. Liam, the machine, Williams. Seem to keep fighting <laughs> who I don't like. So it's always going to get heated, you know. You're not going to see a difference. I'm just going to tear through him. I'm going to put an all in him. I'm going to hurt him. Bad. Easy. 
What can people expect from you in the opening round of this fight? We're going to expect fireworks and um, I'm going to knock him out. Good and proper, man. I'm going to finish him proper, man. From Belfast, Northern Ireland, he is a former two-weight world champion, Carl the Jackal Frimpton. From Leeds, England, Josh the Leeds Warrior, Warrington. Eight stone, 13 pounds, 14 ounces. Eight stone, 13 pounds, nine ounces. Trained out for 12 weeks. I know Carl's ready for 12 hard rounds as well, so give the fans what they want. and They want an exciting fight. Everything on the line for, for this belt. But I've just got a little bit more, and I'm ready. I'm the best supported fighter on the planet, I'm telling you. These are the most passionate fans in the world, and they're going to let themselves be heard on Saturday night. And I'm winning this fight, no doubt in my mind. My title's on the line, and uh, there's a lot riding on it, but like I say, you can't stop momentum, and 2018 is my year, and uh, tomorrow morning I'll wake up. It's like Christmas Day, it's fight day, so, you know, I sit and think about certain moments, like get, walking in, walking down corridors, getting in change rooms, having that bit of banter in change rooms, during the ring walk, and then just being in there, biting on gum shield, taking a punch and hitting him twice as hard, and just being in there, all the noise going on and everything else amongst it. I've stuck to my word from, from day one, throughout this build-up and all, all the stuff. I said that the build-up don't need any hype, it don't need any talking, because I respect him as a fighter. Um, and when we come face to face, I just said to him, are you ready for the 12 rounds, Carl? And he said, I'm ready to go. And it was just a couple of words like that exchanged. I wanted to look him in the eye and know that he's ready, because I'm, I don't know excuses after when I beat him. I want to know that I'm fighting the very best Carl Frampton, because I'm ready to go for anything tomorrow night. So um, I was just letting him know that he's not in there to just, you know, walk over. He's in there for a tough night. There's only one way it's ending. And still, and still I've been saying it for, like, well, more or less since the fight's been announced. And uh, I've seen it, I've dreamt it, you know, many a time. So um, it's happening. Get home uh, on Sunday, get my Christmas shopping done and enjoy Christmas, still champion. The fans, their belief is rooted deep. Deep in the soul of the city. Garcia, Donner, Jackson, all down. Lee Selby, goodbye. I've had the belt. One night of, One night of glory. This, this is my time.